I've been using the MacBook Air M4 for about a week and a half now. I wanted to discover what this is capable of in the world of vibe coding and AI. So, I'm in the middle of recording a video right now. It's about Bolt DIY and it has given me a good idea about what the M4 MacBook Air is capable of when it comes to actually running LLMs locally on your machine, vibe coding. Let's quickly get the hardware out of the way because from a package perspective, it is small, it is light. It's been lovely taking this around with me, barely feeling anything on my back. Actually, I guess it's worth mentioning that I do have a MacBook Pro M1 and the 120 hertz screen is by far and away the most overrated thing I encounter on a daily basis. For a start, I have it set up on a monitor here, which is not 120 hertz. Secondly, I think such a big screen, you don't really benefit from a high refresh rate. Similarly is the mini LED display. So I have the M4 iPad Pro. So that kind of solves my consuming of content on plus my iPhone. What the MacBook Air taught me is that I really don't need those things whatsoever, particularly doing my job. If those things, if you watch content, if you do everything on your laptop, you might want to consider why a MacBook Pro might be it. But honestly, I didn't miss any of that. One thing I don't like is the ports are all on one side. It's so nice to be able to plug in either side. I'm surprised they didn't move the power MagSafe input to the side where there's only the headphone jack. Oh, and one last little thing. MacBook M4 does get a bit hotter than I actually thought it would. I mean, I'm touching it now. Very, very warm. It's got no fan in it, but I didn't expect it to get this warm. It's still fine. It's still okay to put on your lap and all the rest of it. It's just hotter than I expected it. So with the hardware out of the way, let's talk about what I've been doing on this computer from a software perspective. I have been running Cursor and Windsurf on my machine. Now granted the actual AI side of things is kind of pushed off to the servers. It's really just running things like Node, NPM, running servers to run the, the web applications. It's been smooth as butter for that kind of stuff. Honestly, I thought I would really struggle even with that because for one reason or another, I was starting to see stuttering on my MacBook Pro running cursor. I actually think that was down to multiple windows open in my browser that was slowing it down rather than cursor or windsurf in and of itself. So from a basic website development standpoint, this is a perfectly capable machine. Even with the 16 gigs of RAM, like I had no issues whatsoever. Similarly, vibe coding in things like Replit, Lovable, Bolt, again, rang perfectly well, like it was more than capable of running these sorts of applications. And that was actually the biggest question I wanted to ask. Can I just do generic web development on this machine without any hiccups. Some other interesting tools that I've used is the Web Studio local app. Again, no problems there. I've also been in situations where I've had uh, Web Studio open, Cursor or Windsurf open, running multiple tabs inside of Zen. And honestly, the performance did not really take any sort of hit. That being said, where I did start to see some chugging, I needed to run Docker for a few little things here or there. So it's not really part of my day to day. Saying that Docker did tend to slow down the machine just a little bit. And I can imagine the bigger the, the environment or the image it might actually cause some issues there. But again, it it kind of, it was perfectly acceptable. I really didn't feel like I was really drastically slowed down by running Docker, which I think is the most labor intensive task any sort of web developer is gonna do. Correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, I have my tools and systems and my tech stack that I choose. If you are a web developer, let us know what the kind of demanding aspects of your workflow is. But from what I'm aware, Docker really is, especially Docker if you're running a server and a front end. And the other tasks that I was doing just before kind of recording this video is I was running local LLMs on my machine using Olama and Bolt DIY, which is a vibe coding tool that all runs locally. And it was very, very slow. Now I can see my computer is chugging away here, but it is holding out and I have faith in your MacBook Air. Running LLMs was surprisingly fast, just kind of on its own. Um, running Open Web UI, I've got a video coming out on that, and Alama. I was surprised at how quickly it was working on some of the lower, sort of smaller models. 
So some light AI usage, it can actually do quite well. But if you're a heavy local LLM user, probably wouldn't recommend the MacBook Air. But if I didn't do editing, I would absolutely consider the MacBook Air M4. The only thing I would do is potentially get a, I got the base model by the way. But my understanding is that the CPU might be the thing that I need to upgrade, which looking at the prices probably is an extra 200 pounds. Actually, to be fair, they're all 10 core. There's no way for me to actually increase the power. So I have to go to a MacBook Pro. But if you're just using no code tools, Webflow, uh, vibe coding tools like Replit, I definitely think this is more than capable. You might increase the RAM a little bit, which is an extra 200. I think you'd be perfectly happy with the way it works. So overall, really, really impressed with how capable it, of this is. I think my audience will be surprised that they can get a lot of their work done, whether it be design, whether it be development. I honestly think you will be very surprised if content creation, content consumption isn't something you really do. If you're just doing work on this laptop, I think you will be able to do your work at a professional level and be more than happy with the MacBook Air. Ultimately, I think Apple have the two week return window, no questions asked. That's what I'll be doing, returning this. Amazon, I think even have a 30 day window. At the end of the day, give it a go based on my recommendation. I think you'll be surprised. I think you'll be very, very happy and you'll know very quickly whether you start to hit those ceilings. And in those scenarios, you can return it. And I think depending on how hard you hit those ceilings, whether you go for the base MacBook Pro or you start to look into the kind of like the MacBook M4 Pro models. Anyway, hope this was helpful, a bit different, a bit fun. Like, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you to everyone who support me on Patreon. They get early access videos, they get bonus footage as well, little tidbits here and there that I don't release on this channel, including extra longer videos. Potentially this, a longer version of this video will be released on Patreon as well. So if you want to support me on there, patreon.com slash 0x5m5, and I'll see you in the next one.